Hello, everybody. My name is Doug Ward. I'm the chair of the board of Farm Radio International. And first of all, I want to uh, say hello to my colleague, Ben Fiafar, and to all of you, and thank you, who've been in organizing and who are participating in this very important Farm Radio Symposium. Anything that we can do together to strengthen small-scale farming uh, will pay off largely in, uh, in terms of helping poverty reduction and uh, rural foods, improving rural food security. And we at Farm Radio International know that uh, carefully designed radio programs, especially those that are linked uh, with the use of cell phones, can be a critical tool in this very important work. I wish you uh, every success with your deliberations today and this week, and I hope you leave the symposium ready to make changes Changes that might make some people uncomfortable, but which might make millions of people much more comfortable. I know that I'm supposed to talk about our new document, which we call uh, 75 Ways to Fix Your Farmer Program. But first, I thought I should say a couple of words about where that comes from. At Farm Radio International, we were looking at the future and wondering what services we should be providing to farm radio stations in the future. And we asked a simple question of ourselves. What are the radio stations doing now? What kind of radio programs are radio stations producing for farmers? And frankly, we didn't know. We didn't have the data. We had anecdotal information, of course, from, our, from visiting stations, but nothing very systematic. And so we set up a small research project, which we call ARPA, the African Rural Radio Program Analysis. Its job, visit 22 radio stations across five countries, Ghana, Kenya, Tanzania, Cameroon, and Malawi. Go into those radio stations, listen to their farmer programs, find out what resources they use, find out what help they need from outside. And the hope was that we could learn from that and decide what we could do to retool the services we provide to uh, radio stations across Sub-Saharan Africa. And we're going to have a major report on that coming up in the next few months. And that's going to help to, us to determine how we should retool our services. But along the way, we realized that we had transcripts, written transcripts in English, of 22 radio programs aimed at farmers from across these five countries. Well, that was just too good to, to be true for a couple of old radio hands, myself a uh, former CBC radio broadcaster in Canada, and Marvin Hankey, who's an experienced BBC and Malawi radio producer. We read all the transcripts of these 22 programs and picked out the best practices we could find, and at the same time, some of the worst practices about doing farmer programs. And I only wish that Marvin was here uh, this, today with me so that he could uh, participate because uh, we, this was very much a joint effort, and we had a lot of fun doing this. Then we combined uh, these best practices with some other best practices and bad practices that we've learned over the years at Farm Radio International. And then we decided, had to decide, well, how are we going to roll this out? Well, the last thing we wanted to do was to produce a semi-academic report that would sit on everybody's shelf and gather dust until it was finally pitched. We wanted to put together a document that would be useful for everybody who had participated in this study, over 22 radio stations. We wanted to give something back to the managers and producers and hosts who had opened their stations uh, to us and helped us with this. And then we even got fancier and we decided that, well, if we're doing that, why don't we publish it in a way that will be useful and practical for all farm broadcasters across Africa? so that all of them can get value out of this small research project. And that's where we came up with the idea of doing a kind of a checklist. Uh, and it turned out, as we added up the various points that uh, made sense to us, it added up to a neat 75 ways that you can fix or improve your farmer program. And then we thought, w one more refinement to that. Let's give broadcasters First of all, a cluster of easy things that they can do to change their program, and then the somewhat harder things, and then some of the tougher things that where they need probably management approval, maybe some new resources. 
So what I'm going to do now, I'll go to that document and I'll give you some of the quick fixes and then some of the intermediate ones and some of the harder ones. The first quick fix we said you should do is write an introduction to each program that compels your listener to stick around. We often just think that because we're on air, people will just stay with us. But those days are over. Any farmer can get two or three channels on his, uh, his or her radio. And uh, why, why, why will they stick with us? Well, they'll stick with us if we give them a good reason to stay. And that usually isn't just a shopping list of what's coming up. You've got to give a listener an emotional reason to stay with your program. And we give the ex example, rather than say, we're going to talk to a vet about a certain disease that goats get, say something like this. Betty Mumo's goats are dying of X disease. We talk to a vet who will tell you how to keep that from happening at your farm. You see the difference. So this is just a matter of a little bit of thinking and a little bit of writing, and it will keep your audience staying with you throughout the show. And we also say, as a number, another easy to do thing, promote the next episode of your program, not just in your show, but all through the schedule of your radio station. There are a lot of listeners who are listening to women's programs and environmental programs and human rights programs and music programs who maybe don't know about your program. But if you have a promo for your show just running on the edge of those shows, they'll say, oh, that's something interesting. I'll tune into that another time. It doesn't cost you a penny. It means that every week you have to write a compelling promo, but your, your station should run that and you should run promos for other shows. Another easy one. Offer prizes for people who can give correct answers. Now that may, you may wonder what I mean by that. But in a farmer program, you often have to pass on a lot of detailed information. And frankly, that can be both boring and it can also be hard for a farmer to remember. So if you say, okay, at the end of this item, uh, we're all throwing the lines open and anybody, the first person who can tell us the six points that was made in that interview uh, they get a prize. Well, people phone in and they stumble and they give you the answers either successfully or not, but the listener learns while this is going on. They, and, and there's a bit of humor as people stumble with their answers and great success if they win. And then you don't have to hand them out a big prize. The prize may be simply that they can say hi to five of their best friends. People love to win prizes. People love to watch other people stumble. It's just great radio. So those are, I'll do another one here. And this is a, gets more into the kind of the content of your, your programming. Items should feature farmers solving their own problems. That's the only way smallholder farming works in Africa. You simply have got to be able to solve most of your own problems. There isn't a government that's going to bail you out or provide handouts or provide the information you need when you need it. And so it's a very good way to help farmers to learn what the practice of farming is. They either solve their own problems or they solve them with the help of other farmers. And so you interview farmers who have tackled problems and have solved them with their own resources or with the resources of farmers around them. That gets across a very, very important lesson. And it is empowering for farmers to know that people like them can do that. What's the cost? Well, it just means you've got to find those examples and go out and get those interviews. So those are things we thought that uh, broadcasters could do without a, a really a big change uh, to the resources or uh, planning of their radio stations. So then we move into things that are a little bit uh, harder, middle-sized improvements, things that may take a few months to get under place. And the first thing we say there is get out to the farming communities. Farmers will trust you a whole lot more if they've heard you out there in the fields, if they've heard you talking about the weather as it's rolling over your heads, if they know that you got stuck on the road coming into a certain village to do an interview. It raises the credibility as you, of you as a host. And the problem, of course, is that getting out to villages is expensive and a lot of radio stations don't have a lot of money. But somebody's getting out to those villages. Maybe it's an extension worker. Maybe it's a news reporter from your radio station. 
Maybe it's a, a truck is going from an international NGO. Uh, well, catch on with them. Find some way to get either yourself as the host or another broadcaster out there. And then if you go, you can do the interview. Or if somebody else goes, then they come home and you do an interview with them. So that you actually have the experience of knowing what's going on on the farms of the, broadcast, of the uh, farmers that you are serving. Another thing in the middle area was to do phone-in shows on farming issues. Some radio stations are already doing very sophisticated phone-in shows. And some haven't started. Some radio stations are afraid to do phone-in shows. And in some countries, the government doesn't even allow phone-in shows. But it's important to push that envelope. Why? Because when farmers have an opportunity to speak on an issue, they will reinforce each other's opinions, and you'll get uh, people naming issues and discussing what's important to them. Now, an important thing to know about a phone-in show is that it works best if it has a single topic phrased as a question, and the, and the host keeps people to that topic. And so you say something like this. Today we have Mary Chamba of the Latoe Honey Co-op with us. And our question is this. What is stopping you from keeping bees? Now, people can get a lot of information in by just trying to answer that question. And by you keeping them to it, you don't ramble all over the place. And by the end of the show, you've got some very clear answers. And so it's not only having phone-in shows, but it's having a producer who knows how to manage it and handle people uh, to make that phone-in show work. The third thing that I'll say, uh, a fix uh, to improve your show, is to hold officials to account. Now, this isn't always easy. Many officials love to go on air, but often the reason they want to go on air is to crow about their great successes with whatever they've done or think that they've done. But the best thing you can do is talk to your listeners and find out what they think about the road between your village, that one village and a market village. And why hasn't it been improved when, when there was money in the budget to improve it? And you get the, that, you ask that kind of question of the official. Now the official might try to turn it around and say, well, that's a wonderful topic, but then I want to tell you the wonderful things I've done for my constituents. So the important thing then when you do interview an official is always have backup questions, uh, those second and third questions, so that when the official diverts you from what you want answered, you can go right back at them and ask them to answer the question that your farmers want answered. And if they won't answer the question, then you say, sir, I guess you're just not going to answer this question that farmers want answered. Don't let them off the hook. Mind you, if you're going to do that kind of thing, you better have your manager on side because there may be a little heat coming from the official. But I think that, uh, and in some places, you may not simply be able to do that given the political situation. But it's just something, again, to push to make for better programming to serve your farmers better. Now, in the area of those, the third uh, group of uh, improvements, the big stuff, uh, things that are going to take more resources, things that really do need management help, uh, the first one is find out what your farmers really need from your radio station. Uh, when was the last time that your station went out into the field and systematically interviewed male farmers, female farmers, older farmers, younger farmers, to find out what their situation was? What are the things that they can do well? Where are the problems that they have in their farming? What are the opportunities that might be coming up with new markets opening up? And what are the constraints, uh, things like land tenure, issues like that? These are the things you need to know in order to be able to do a radio program that will really serve those farmers well. You also need to know what media they use, what they like about the radio programs that they listen to, so you can copy them. And uh, you need to know, in terms of information, what is the survival information they need, things like weather, uh, what is the current information they really want to know, anything new that's going on. And you also want to know about the deep-rooted issues that they face. I mentioned the issue of land tenure. Uh, it, that could be a situation where women have trouble inheriting land. It's the issue of uh, adapting to climate change that's bothering farmers all over Africa. These deep-seated issues, while tougher to deal with, should be part of every farmer program, not just the lighter more immediate information. 
Another of the uh, third level of uh, improvements you can make is, is uh, get access to a computer and to the internet. It, it, there was a day when there weren't very few computers in radio stations, but that has changed. Probably 60 or 70 percent of even rural poor radio stations have computers. And what amazing resources that brings into a radio station. It brings in a wealth of program research. It allows you to edit interviews you've done. It allows you to, uh, to write uh, introductions that need to be written. I talked about the introduction to the show that needs to be somewhat written out or at least blocked out. And with that computer, you can also archive your program so that you can go back to it a year's time and say, what did we do on that climate change issue around root, root vegetables? Oh, that. And then you may use a clip from that for a program you're doing next week. In this day and age, every radio station should have a computer and internet access if they're really going to serve their farmer well. I talked, another one is tackle those, those deep-rooted issues, and I've, I've uh, mentioned that before. Uh, that takes research time, uh, that takes people with a bent for research, uh, but every farmer program should be doing that. And another thing that is needed in order to improve your program is to have more resources for your program. And that means that the radio station must diversify its resources. Are, there, are you selling commercial spots on your program? That would be a good way to bring money in. Uh, is there an NGO in the area that is working in uh, farmer issues and can support your program? I'd be very careful about having a fully sponsored program because if you have a, somebody who fully sponsors your program, they sometimes like to have some control over editorial content. And your boss, for a farmer program should be the farmers, not an advertiser. Not bad selling commercial time, but you don't want to sell commercial time in a way that the person doing having the commercial uh, has control over your program. So I've given you some of the ways that we think farmers, that uh, broadcasters can improve their program. But as I said, by listening to these programs, we also picked up some pretty bad practices too, and I thought I'd better mention a couple of them. One of them was, don't blame farmers. More than once in those 22 tapes, in fact, I think it was three times, we heard extension agents blaming farmers for this or that, well, or, and even broadcasters. And I can't think of an easier way to turn off uh, farmers than to, to be lamenting and blaming them for not doing something. Frankly, if you're blaming somebody, a farmer, you should probably be blaming yourself for not having done the right kind of programming to help them over that hurdle. Second one, don't lecture to farmers. Many farm broadcasts are simply one-person lectures full of complex uh, instructions and long words. And, and people think that because uh, they're very knowledgeable and, uh, uh, and articulate and intelligent discourses, that that's just what you need. Well, you can just hear the farm radio sets being clicked off all over your country if that happens. Radio, is, it's not like you're in a lecture room with the door locked and you have to sit and listen to the professor. Radio is something people make a choice to listen to. And if you start to give them a long uh, academic lecture, you can be sure that they'll turn off. A third bad practice. Don't assume that your listeners or all farmers are men. In fact, most farmers are women. And you should be talking to women. And it should be women talking to women. And you should be adapting the content of your programming so that you can help women do their farming better. And the fourth thing would be don't dump too much information into an, uh, a program. Yes, it would be nice to talk to somebody who's working on climate change and they say, I would like this in a program, oh, and this, oh, and then this too, and this too. But you can't just shovel information into a wheelbarrow and then dump it into a farmer's head. You are making a radio program. A radio program is a relationship between the presenter and the listener. And it's a conversation. And it has to ha proceed at a pace that the farmer finds comfortable. And it has to be at a pace that the farmer can absorb. So you don't just decide, well, we need all this done, so let's do it all today. So those are four really bad practices, and I hope uh, you've all learned from it.
So as you can see, improving your program isn't just about starting new practices, but it's about stopping old ones. And sometimes that's harder to do. So what is the future for our little uh, exercise here, the future of 75 ways? Well, what we Marvin and I say about it is it's a work in progress. It's only 75 ways because that's what we came up with from listening to these radio programs. We would hope that a year from now we can put out a document that's called 100 ways that you can improve your farmer program. And the way that will happen is by having radio broadcasters, farm broadcasters across Africa read this document and say, oh, these things work, but they have totally forgot about this. That would be a wonderful way to improve the program. Or they'll tell us, that's not very clear, I don't understand it. Or maybe when this gets translated into French, the translation won't be very good. So we need to get farmer uh, broadcasters, farm broadcasters feedback on this document. Uh, tell us what works for them, what doesn't, and how they can improve it. And our hope will be that a year from now, we'll be publishing called 100 ways or 150 ways to improve your farmer program. I want to say and I'm sure most of you know this, there are hundreds, there are thousands of broadcasters out there, young people and grandmothers, who are committed to becoming better farm broadcasters. And we want to help them, and we want them to share their best practices. And we will use 75 ways to help move this along. We'll do it by putting this document into our script service. We'll do it more in our in-station training programs. And we'll do it through Farm Radio Weekly, which goes out now to over 2,300 African farm broadcasters. And once we've waded through the huge piles of data that we've gathered through ARPA, we will take a sharp look at all of our services to farmers and we'll find ways to make them better. And then we will be able to help Africa's legion of farm broadcasters even more. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this has been of some interest to you. Uh, best wishes again to you with your deliberations today, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you.